as a scientist, what I do and I like are experiments. So let's start with an experiment today. Every one of you, please take a finger from your favorite hand and place it on the palm of your other hand in the way you like. Now experience. You probably feel a little warm, maybe sweaty. Maybe your nail is too long and it hurts a bit while it touches your palm. Or maybe you put tons of sunscreen today and you feel oily skin sensation. But these sensations, this is the magic of our skin. Now you can rest your hands. Skin is able to feel the surrounding environment and send information about it to the brain, such as, for example, temperature, so whether you're touching something cold or feeling uh, heat coming from something you put on the fire, but also textures or pressure. And the brain is then able to take this information and process it and take uh, decisions such as, don't touch the hot pot on the fire. All this is possible thanks to thousands of tiny structures, which are called receptors, and which are spread all over our body and can gather these stimuli that we have from the outside world and translate them into electronic signals that are then uh, relayed to the brain via the nervous system. Now, the density of such receptors changes uh, very widely throughout the body, and we have um, that in some parts of the body, such as fingertips, we can have up to several hundreds of such tiny structures per square centimeter. So to give you an idea of what this means, if we get a surface area of a one euro coin, we have that in that area on our fingertip that will be more than a thousands of these sensation capturing receptors. Moreover, these receptors, regardless whether the brain will actually use the information that they are sending, they will anyways gather this information 200 to 1,000 times per second. So from the beginning of this talk, a thermoreceptor in your hand has felt the temperature around it more than 30,000 times. That's a pretty busy highway of information, don't you think? What if I told you that researchers are nowadays actively involved in finding ways to uh, develop and design a device that could actually mimic our skin sense of touch or even improve its capabilities? Well, this is a pretty complicated task, as you may imagine, given the extreme complexity of the natural inspiration that we have, which is skin. But we are tackling it one bit at a time, starting from uh, wearable devices and uh, patches or uh, smart watches that can take information from the environment, but also from the person wearing them. And, and then we can, for example, analyze these signals uh, through an app on your smartphone. But the goal we have is that of creating a device that could actually be used on our natural skin or even used as a artificial skin on a prosthesis, for example. So using uh, to do this, we need sensors, which are somehow the electronic alter ego of receptors. So instead of being made of biological tissues as receptors are, sensors are made of electronic components, but the same way as receptors, they take the uh, stimuli from the outside world and can translate it into signals that we can, again, uh, see in an app on your smartphone. Using printed electronics, we can then uh, integrate such sensors and create devices that are able to do that. So we then have uh, that we can print them on a top of a flexible and conformable uh, surface. It is then connected to a more bulky and traditional electronic part where the uh, signal analysis and power are located. And we can create patches such as this one. Yeah, I just got it out of my pocket. Now we can try this on and we can actually see how it works. So this is a patch to monitor vital signs of a person wearing them. And I'm gonna try this on and we're gonna do a little experiment again. So, yeah, while I wear it, I can tell you, you will see five different signals. One is the heart rate or the electrocardiography signal. 
One is the um, respiration rate, and then there are X, Y, and Z accelerometer, which is uh, just a movement in the three directions. And this patch is used um, as a, uh, to early uh, detect diseases, cardiovascular diseases, but also is used uh, to... Um, I don't find... It. Ah, it's here. <laughs> it's used to decrease uh, the pressure on the healthcare system. And this is possible uh, because it can reduce the hospitalization time of people, for example, after a surgical operation. So then you can send them home earlier and you can have them uh, monitored in, uh, from remote by the doctor while they're wearing the patch, up to 15 days even. So if we now want to start the... Yes. Okay. Here is the signal. Yeah, so uh, this patch is an all printed patch and you have uh, different electrodes that are actually measuring the signals. And yeah, this is what you see is the raw data where we can see this is actually already a pretty good data. But what I personally find the most interesting is the combination of these printed electronics of which we have just seen the capabilities with smart materials. Smart materials are materials that respond to changes in the surrounding environment and perform actions. So for example, they can heal themselves. So when you cut through a material, it can actually remarginate this cut or uh, change shape upon stimuli such as, for example, temperature or light exposure. And using these materials, we can create sensors such as the one you see in this video here, which is a self-healing, uh, self-healable material uh, that is used for a strain gauge. So we have a sensor that senses deformation and is mounted uh, on top of a, a junction in a robotic hand and measures the, in real time the opening and closing of this robotic hand. So if you want to think of an application for this, you could, for example, Imagine it being mounted on a prosthesis and the person wearing the prosthesis being able to grab an object and understand if they're doing so, even without looking at it, just by the uh, feedback that our sensor provides. So electronic skins, or e-skins as they are called, um, have a vi wide variety of fields of application. So uh, we have seen one that is a biomedical field uh, in wearable devices or processes, but you can also use them in uh, virtual reality and haptics to create more intuitive and non-invasive uh, human-machine interaction interfaces. So if we want to dream with our eyes open, we can think of a device that would integrate all these smart materials that we have just seen together with printed electronics. And we could, with, that, with such a device, we could uh, take stimuli from the outside world and uh, measure those where, while also measuring uh, signals from the person wearing this device. And at the same time, also triggering uh, the true skin receptors that we talked at the beginning of this talk and create somehow a feedback with our nervous system. And this is the revolution that electronic skins are anticipated to bring. So if you now close your eyes and feel the sensation that the summer breeze in this early September day in Forte de Marmi is causing on your skin, you could imagine that you could feel this very same sensation just sitting at your desk in your home in the city, miles away from the sea. Electronic skins may enable us to relive, transmit and reimagine experiences, allowing humanity to better understand and communicate with the people around us. Thank you very much. <laughs>